Now YouTube, just a quick update on this power supply. It's a mega power supply, mega 500 power supply, the light power supply, the five, uh, four and a half amp on the five volt rail power supply. It is a 312503-02. I think it's German made. So long and short of it is, I was thought, oh, I'll test out all my power supplies. I plug this one in, it clicks, it goes dig, 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 when there's no load on it, and that's the key. It's supposed to do that when there's no load on it, because what is actually happening, and I was too thick to realise, is that when there's no load on it, it's obviously cutting out because there's no load, and it's trying again and cutting out and it's trying again and cutting out because there's no load. So that is what it's supposed to do. But what it's not supposed to do is to give you a belt once you pull the plug off if you accidentally touch these two pins. Um, which it did, it gave me a hell of a whack and I thought that is it, you're coming apart, I want to know what's wrong with you. So I chased the rabbit hole round and round and round. Um, I couldn't see what these were, they were burnt, they're burnt on virtually every one I see of these on the internet. Um, no colour code, the code had burnt off them. They're actually 47 ohm, 2% metal oxide resistors. I've replaced them. The old ones were actually fine, but they were just burnt to a cinder. Um, so I've replaced them. Then I put it all back together, and it went bang. And I thought, oh, oh dear, I thought to myself. And this resistor here blew up. This, and then I couldn't figure out what that was, because all the code had blown off it. And that is a 0.68 ohm, I think, metal oxide resistor. I've put a 1 watt in there. And I put 0.6 watts of these in. Incidentally, these resistors are the same as that one there. It's the same, uh, so they're 47 ohm, 0.68 ohm. So then I put it all together again, after I'd taken stuff off and tested it, and it went bang again. And this blew. This is the main power transistor, and getting hold of them takes a few days off eBay, so I've bought about five of them for a fiver, and I've got this really, really great heat sink on there. I've actually in the process of making a better one with a bit of Loctite and a proper bit of metal. But anyway, <clears throat> that went bang. So I thought, right, that's it. Took it all apart, recapped all of this side, recapped that, recapped all the little black ones there, tested that one, that was fine. Um, replaced the bridge rectifier, um, tested that cap, tested that cap, tested all the little green caps, they tested fine. Tested all these diodes, they tested fine. Um, put it back together and it went bang and what it was was I'd taken off the, the components so many times and put them back on that the main ballast cap wasn't actually connecting to the rail and it blew the main uh, transistor don't know why and it was making a hell of a sort of whining sort of sound it, it, it sounded like it was going to blow up and I was like turning it on with a stick and going oh help and then I thought, right, I'll tear it all down again. So I teared it all down again, and I traced it all through, and I figured that was one of the problems. And then I found other problems, and the other problems I found with this were, and I think they were always there, that thyristor here, this is a thyristor, was either weak or it was, was on the brink of failing. Um, the thyristor is a... Oh, Oh, come on, be nice. That's not the thyristor. Of course it's not. Of course it's not. That, why would it be the thyristor? When we want to see the thyristor. That is a thyristor. And why would that... BRX44. Showed us two resistors on the gizmo. Not good. Replaced it with a BRX49. That was the first thing that f had failed. Well, it wasn't the first thing. It's been an ongoing saga, but the first thing that was actually leading somewhere. The second thing that failed was this transistor. And this transistor is a BC327. It's a pretty common PNP transistor. So I had a little rummage round, and I put in a BC638 here. You see I've had to twist the legs different because the pinout's different. So I replaced that, that, and replaced over the course of this life, replaced that, these two resistors here, this resistor here, the thyristor, and this transistor, which are all in the same sort of area. So, and if you look at these boards, every example you see, and that is not my soldering, well, that is, 
but that isn't. That was always burnt to the point that where these resistors link together, which is here, there's nothing left on the board. Basically, twisted the wires of the resistors together and soldered them together. And there are two 48 ohm resistors in series. Like, what? Why? Why? And they're getting so hot, you can see how hot they're getting on the board. Um, so they're now 0.6 watt ones. Um, hopefully, that will help. And I should really explain myself here. Well, a couple of things. I've taken this off so many times, I've burnt the pads, and I've had to uh, bridge them on to the existing like that. That's the main power transistor. And this, this is that area where the resistors go across here where it burnt. And then it comes back down this track, but there was nothing left of that track because the resistor had got so hot and I'd taken it off and on so many times, so I've bridged it with a bit of wire there all the way onto that pad there so it's got both that's not going to move that's fine um, so yeah I'm just going to change this uh, change this heat sink for one I've cut out of a bit of aluminium I'll put a, a serrated washer on there and I'm going to put some thread lock on there so it can't come loose because I'm just worried about the old one was riveted on but I don't have a rivet gun I don't know that might actually be better but I might put it back to original and then I'm going to turn it on and see it working I always do this, but I've got to really, don't touch this, this is the main ballast cap. If you do do what I'm doing, take it apart, do not touch the underside, underside of the board until you have um, discharged that cap, which you can do with a pair of insulated pliers and a resistor, and bend them so that you're just going across the two pins of the, I'll show you properly, not half arsedly across the two pins. Just to discharge it. Failing that, if you haven't got a resistor, you're brave. You get an insulated screwdriver and you just bridge the two, two, um, two, two pads of that. That's got about can have about 200 volts on it, and it can because when it was not fixed, there was 200 and odd volts sitting on that cap. Um, that one, these ones, not so bad, but the same thing really applies, and the transistor. I've got to say that because this can be dangerous. There she is, all ready to go back. Thermal compound um, bolt and rivet and lock tight, thread lock, and a really tightly done up. Hopefully, that'll stay there. Well, there we are, plugged it in, it didn't blow up, it is working. This computer's got a shockingly noisy drive. I've got about five of these things, I've got to put some on eBay that I've fixed up. This one's got a really noisy drive, but as you can see, it does work. So thanks for watching, I hope that's helped someone, and I'll see you all later. Cheers, bye.